and cold. She'll be all right, Mother. And I, I think we may have grace now. Tom, honey, you say grace. What? Well, honey, what do we usually do before we eat a meal? We say grace, don't we? Oh. For that which we are about to receive, we thank thee, O Lord. And for all thy manifold mercies to us this day. God's holy name be praised. I declare, Mr. Kern, I haven't had such a pleasant evening since I don't know when. Well, thank you, Mrs. Wingfield. I'd like to propose a toast. Oh. To the Old South. What the old song? Hey. Oh, my. Oh, Shakespeare, what do you think happened? <coughs> Maybe it's a storm. Yeah. Oh, my. <laughs> Where was Moses when the lights went out? Huh? Do you know the answer to that one, Mr. O'Connor? Well, I don't think I do. I heard one answer, but it wasn't very nice. <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> I guess we must have just blown a fuse or something. Yeah. Do you know anything about burned out fuses, Mr. O'Connor? Well, I know a little bit about it, Mrs. Wingfield, but where's the fuse box? Oh, must you know about that, too? Well, it helps. Uh, it's in the kitchen near the icebox. Oh, thank you. Watch out. Don't stumble over anything. Oh, I got eyes like an owl. What happened? Wouldn't it be awful if we lost him? Are you all right, Mr. O'Connor? Yeah, I'm all right, Mrs. Wingfield. I'd better help him. Tom Wingfield, that light bill I gave you a few days ago, the one I told you we got the notice about. Oh, yeah. You didn't neglect to pay it by any chance. Oh, why, I... You I, didn't. I, I might have known it. I think I broke a plate. Oh, don't fret about it. The fuses are all right. We better have some illumination from the candles. Oh, yes, ma'am. I only intended them for ornamentation. I'll spend the rest of the evening in the 19th century, before Mr. Edison found that electric lamp. Candlelight's my favorite kind of light. Oh, that's because you're romantic. <laughs> Tom, as a penalty for your carelessness, you can help me with the dishes. Oh, let me give you a hand, Mrs. Wingfield. Oh, no, Laura's all by herself in the parlor. Why don't you go in and keep her company? Oh, sure. Perhaps you could coax her to drink a glass of wine. Might do her good. All right. It's elderberry, homemade. You think you can carry both at once? Oh, sure. I'm Superman. <laughs> <laughs> Tom, you get into your apron. Yes, Mother. Tom, you get started in there while I clear the table. Hello, Laura. Hello. How are you feeling now? Better? Yes, thank you. Oh, this is for you. Drink it. Elderberry wine. But don't get drunk. <laughs> hey, where will I put the candles? Anywhere. Well, how about here on the floor, all right? Yes. Oh, I better put a newspaper under to catch the drippings. Well, I'm sure the cardinals won't mind. I like sitting on the floor. Do you have any objection? No. I'd better use this pillow. How about you? Don't you like sitting on the floor? Yes, I do. Why don't you, then? I will. Better take a pillow. <laughs> I can't see you sitting way over there. I can see you. Well, I know, but that's not fair. I'm in the limelight. Oh, now I can see you. <laughs> Comfortable? Yes, sir. So am I. Comfortable as an old cow. Would you like some gum? No, thank you. Are you sure? And I think I'll indulge you. With your permission? Brother tells me you're shy. Is that right, Laura? I don't know. I judge you to be an old-fashioned type of girl. Well, I think that's a pretty good type to be. I hope you don't think I'm being too personal. Do you? Oh, no. <laughs> 
I think I will have a piece of chewing gum now, if you don't mind. Oh, sure. getting along. How should I know? All I know is that this is the first young man we've introduced to your sister. I do want it to be a success. I do so much want it to be a success. I know, Mother. <laughs> Tom, how many times have I told you? What have you? I done wrong? Waste. You know, I have an idea I've seen you before. I had that idea as soon as you opened the door. You know, it seems almost like I was about to remember your name, but well, the name I started to call you, well, it wasn't a name, so I stopped myself before I said it. Was it Blue Roses? Blue Roses? My gosh, yes! Blue Roses! Well, I didn't even connect you with high school somehow or other, but that's where it was, high school. Well, I didn't even know you were Shakespeare's sister. <laughs> Say, how did I ever get to call you Blue Roses? Well, I was absent from school for a while with pleurosis. When I came back, you asked me what was the matter, and I told you that I had pleurosis, and you thought I said blue roses. <laughs> <laughs> you know, this sure is funny. Yes, it is. Yeah, sure, I remember now. Say, so you were the one who always came in late. It was very hard for me to get up the stairs. I had a brace on my leg then, and it clumped so loud. Well, I never heard any clumping. To me, it sounded like thunder. I never even noticed it. I used to have to go clumping up the aisle while everyone was watching because my seat was in the back row. You should have been self-conscious. Oh, I know. But I was. That's why you're sort of stuck by yourself, huh? Well, I've never had much luck making friends. You know, Laura, people are not so dreadful when you get to know them. That's what you have to remember. And everybody has problems. You think of yourself as being the only one who's disappointed. But just look around. You'll see lots of people as disappointed as you are. Or take me, for instance. Well, I hoped when I was going to school that I'd be further along at this time, six years later than I am now. Remember that wonderful write-up I had in the school yearbook? Oh, yes. It said I was bound to succeed in anything I went into. Steel tarantara, tarantara. We uncomfortable feel tarantara. <laughs> I sang the baritone lead in that operetta. I remember. It was beautiful. You heard me? All three times. No. Yes. All three performances? All three? I wanted to ask you to autograph my program. For oh, what? Right up. Oh, well, you were always surrounded by your friends. I didn't have a chance. I was beleaguered by females in those days. You were very popular. Yeah. I was spoiled in high school. Everybody liked you. Including you? Yes. I did, too. Laura, give me that program. Never. Thank you. Well, my signature may not be worth very much right now, but someday maybe it'll increase in value. You know, being disappointed is one thing, and being discouraged is something else. I am disappointed, but I'm not discouraged.
How is Emily Meisenbach getting along? Well, that crowd head. Well, why do you call her that? Well, that's what she was. You mean you're not going with her anymore? Oh, I never even see her. But it said in the personal section that you were engaged. I know, but I wasn't impressed by that propaganda. It wasn't true. Only in Emily's optimistic opinion. Oh. Mother. <laughs> Mother. What? If you want to hear what they're saying, why don't you go in the dining room and sit down comfortably? Such a nice young man. So full of charm and vivacity and... And charm. I do hope he appreciates Laura. Such a pity she had to collapse at the table. Did you see how beautifully he acted? He took no notice at all. Has it stopped raining? I think so. Oh, Tom, I'm so excited. Calm yourself, Mother. Possess your soul in patience. Oh, Mother. Did you finish high school? You know what I judge to be the trouble with you? Inferiority complex. You know what that is? That's what they call it when someone low rates himself. I understand it because I had it too. I had it until I took up public speaking and developed my voice. Do you know that until then I never thought of myself as being outstanding in any way whatsoever? You did? No, sir. I have a friend who says I can analyze people better than doctors that make a profession of it. Well, that's wonderful. Well, I don't claim that to be necessarily true, but I can sure guess a person's psychology. Excuse me, Laura, I always take it out when the flavor's gone. I'll use this scrap of paper to wrap it up in. I know how it is when it gets stuck on your shoe. Yes, sir, that's what I judge to be your principal trouble. A lack of confidence in yourself as a person. Now, I'm basing that fact on a number of your remarks and on certain observations I've made. Uh, oh, for instance, that clumping you thought was so awful in high school. You see what you did? You dropped out of school. You gave up an education. All because of a little clump, which, as far as I can see, is practically non-existent. But that's not true. You've seen me walk. All you have is a little physical defect, magnified a thousand times by your imagination. You know, my strong advice to you is, think of yourself as superior in some way. Just look around you. What do you see? A world full of ordinary people, all of them born and all of them going to die. Which one of them has one-tenth of your good points? Or mine, or, or anyone else's for that matter, gosh. You mean everybody is superior in some way? Some and many. All you have to do is discover in what. Take me, for instance. Now, my interest happens to lie in electrodynamics, and I want to be ready to go right along with it. And I'm planning to get in on the ground floor. And all that remains is for the industry itself to get underway. Full steam. Knowledge, zip, money, zap, power. Pah! That's the cycle on which democracy is built. I guess you think I think a lot of myself, don't you? Oh, no. No, I don't. He's going to get right to the top. What? He goes to night school. Oh, Jim, yeah, yeah. He really goes in for self-improvement. Well, Tom, you should have told me. Why? Well, any young man who studies public speaking is aiming to have an executive position someday. And you smoke too much. Engineering. My, that's a thing for the future. <laughs> 